Hi, I'm Angel Rivo with Mindalia TV, and we have we have here today Sujan. Hi, Sujan. How are you? Good. How about you? Very well, thank you. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. So, first question for starting our conversation today is, you know, what is that thing that you are the most passionate about? Well, there's a lot of things I'm very passionate about right now, but I'm here to really inspire, empower, and guide people to see their highest selves. I think it's important that people understand who they are and how they are emanating their vibration, if you will, and what message they want to share with everybody. I feel like uh, our world is kind of contracting because of all the stuff that is happening in our world today. And I feel like we have to go the opposite way. We really have to emanate our truth, our passion, as you, as you ask. All the people that is being empowered by you do they have something in common? Uh, yeah. Separation. Lack of confidence. Lack of understanding about what they truly want. What does... What really matters to you? And I think people are confused because they have so many different messages from all over the place and rather than thriving, people are simply surviving. And, and because of that, there's a separation and they're hiding and, and they're just following others when it's not truly their path. So that's where I come in and help, uh, whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, I take a look at everything from an energetic as well as um, all those levels. How do, you, how do you check on the energy of someone? Well, um, I read eyes, I hear things, I see energies. I'm kind of a weirdo. <laughs> um, but I tap in and I ask questions. I'm really, I'm really the facilitator. You're the healer. If you were my client, you're really the healer. You know everything. I mean, the mind, we use that all day long, but you know, the mind is really about history. It doesn't help us with the present moment nor the future. So if we tap into what's there, what's getting in the way, um, we can undo all that is covered, our essence, our truth, our light. And, you know, happiness is really a byproduct of everything that you are, because we are already happy. We are already love. We are uh, joy. But we seem to think we have to fix ourselves. And the reality is if you undo what you've learned, you will already become who you are. And that's, that's through awareness, it's through acceptance, it's through compassion, it's through, you know, there's so many ways to be healed, but... You mentioned un unlearn. So we, we, when do we start to learn something that we eventually have to unlearn, Sujan? I think the moment we're born. You know, sure, our, our mental capacity doesn't develop until, you know, well into seven or eight years old. But emotionally, we're, we're gathering information and all these energies. I mean, everything is energy. So we're learning as the moment we come out of the womb, thanks to our mothers, um, we are bombarded by all the vibrations that are happening around us. Um, so the first seven years is when our emotional body is maturing and that's what we deal with for most of our lives. And then from seven to 14, the give or take, is our mental. And then the physical is from 14 to 21. And these are just rough numbers, obviously. So uh, we're taking on so much information all the time, and especially in today's world we're bombarded with so many vibrations and energies, and that's the learning. Uh, learning from our parents, then learning from our schools, our society, um, and then we have to follow all these codes called government and whatnot. So it's a constant uh, process, and it starts, in my opinion, from day one. Is there anything that we can do? Because you mentioned that you see things you hear things. 
Is that something that everybody can, can do? I think we're all equal. I think we all have that capacity. It, we just have to understand, again, who we are and learn about how we can use our intuition, our vibration, our, you know, uh, as I told you, I'm related to Paramahansa Yogananda, who's the father of yoga in the West. And, uh, you know, what did he bring? He brought meditation and yoga, 1920, into the Americas. And, uh, you know, he's revered by many. But what I've learned is that if you meditate, if you really take a pause out of life and reflect and become one with this unified field, if you, if you want to call it, the all-knowing transcendent or God, whatever you choose to call it, you will get a lot of information that you require to actually travel. And how do you help people to reach that point, Sujan? Um, it's, it's important to really become intuitive or, or use my gifts to help you understand what you require. The name of the game is really awareness. And once you become aware, you become conscious of your patterns, etc. And, and asking the right questions so that, of yourself and reflecting on where your life is. What's working? What's not working? Do we ever ask those questions? No, we're too tied into our daytimer or whatever, you know, that's old school. But our phones and where we have to be and, and is it really taking you to the place that you really want to go to? I think we're, that's where the confusion happens. We, you know, life is about love. Life is about experience. Life is about expansion. Is what you, is the, are the things that you're doing really helping you expand? And, you know, we're so caught up in material things and trying to be part of a tribe or a community that we f lose ourselves because we're following somebody else's lead. So what I do is to help you really understand where you are at this present moment and is it going to really take you to where you really want to go. Let's go a little bit back to your family. Sure. Does anybody else in your family have these gifts, these abilities to to see beyond? Um, my sister is uh, pretty powerful in her, she's more psychic than I am. Uh, I'm more about intuition in present moment and she sees things. Uh, she lives in Mumbai. Um, she's also, she, she's a healer as well, but she doesn't practice if you will. I'm probably the only one in the family right now that's actually going out there and uh, trying to help people see themselves. Do you, when, when your family, when you, you know, when you gather, do you talk about, you know, Yogananda? Do you talk, do you talk about him? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I've been truly blessed in my life. Not only on my, on my dad's side, my dad passed away a few years ago, but uh, my dad's grandmother was Roma. Roma is the eldest sister to Yogananda. But uh, w when he was alive, of course, we talked about him a lot. And then on my mother's side, there was a, another guru named Mohananda Brahmachari. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of words. Um, I was blessed to have him in my life. I mean, it, you can't even describe in words when you feel uh, what you feel in front of a true master. You know, we hear and read about things. But I've been so blessed to really have him in my life and Yogananda's uh, blood, if you will. And Ananda Mohima is another uh, beautiful being, mother, if you will. Uh, so all that uh, has accumulated in my life to a point where I am who I am today. And uh, so the conversations in our family are very spiritual, very loving. Um, uh, I come from an Indian family, obviously, and, and a lot of Indian families want their kids to be a doctor, lawyer, a professional. And that was where I was headed. I was in a corporate environment um, for many years, and then Yogananda showed up in a vision. You know, when you're in a half-awake, half-sleep state, 
while I was in that space and Yogananda showed up as a, a being, that to me was very real. It's almost I could touch him. And what he did was he said, come to me, come to me, come to me. Three times. And that spooked me. Six months later, to make the story really short, I quit my job and I moved to Los Angeles from Toronto in search of what come to me meant. And after uh, losing everything, you know when people say hitting the dark night of the soul? Well, it took, took me to go through that experience to understand who I am and what I'm here to do. And uh, for the last 15 years, I am, you know, helping people to realize what, what life is about and trying to help people open their hearts to themselves. That's what we lack. Really follow who you are and what your being is, is here to be. Could you share with us some anecdotes that you have had with maybe some of, your, of some of the people that you have empowered throughout those last 15 years? Wow, that's uh, antidotes. Well, bottom line, I, I think I said this earlier, it's about awareness. It's about accepting who you are. It's about, you know, people talk about love, but I don't think people really understand what love is. If you can describe in words what love is, then you're, you're not in love. You don't know what love is. I think love is synonymous with what we call God or the highest vibration. It, it, it's, it can't be described, but it's very important for people to understand that if they truly care about who they are, they will receive more of that from the outer world. So if you want love, then be loving. If you want compassion, be compassionate. Whatever it is that you want, become. And, and that way you can start moving in the direction that you truly want to live. And I, I think that is one big deal. And you know, in, in my practice, I talk about what's your focus, what's getting in the way, and the third prong would be energy. What energy are you emanating? So I come in and help people raise their vibration from a divine space. I'm nothing. I'm no one, I am no thing. I, I really feel I'm just simply a conduit. And uh, I just want to love. And I'm still searching what love really is, but I try to be, as a human being, the best emanation of that love. So the tools that I help people with is to, to find what that love is for them, within them. And that's a start. I mean, I've helped, uh, you know, you can't help but being in Los Angeles, working with all kinds of people, and, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, from homeless to celebrities and everything, everyone in between has given me really the patterns in people. And there aren't that many. It's really about understanding, because everybody has a story, right? And we keep telling these stories over and over and over, and we become those stories, and we can't see beyond the story. So we're, we are so attached to that story that um, we don't understand who we are. We've lost ourselves because we're so much more than our stories. It's about the gems. See, if we can release the story emotionally, then we can discover the gems that are in the story, and that becomes your wisdom. And if you take that wisdom, with you and carry it everywhere, you will feel that your vibration is rising to wherever you need to be. Because it's not about everybody being in the one vibration. It's about honoring all vibrations. If we really want oneness, then we have to honor good, bad, ugly. You know, whether we talk about, you know, a bad person, I don't want to name names, but ba a bad person versus a good person, that's judgment. Because if we don't have that contrast, how do we really learn? How do we really grow? Right? Because a seed comes from where? 
it's put into the darkness, into the soil, right? Absolutely. And it's with, by nurturing that seed in the darkness that we can actually bloom in towards the light, towards the sun. So. Thank you. You're so Jen, very it's been welcome. extremely, extremely inspiring. Thank you very much for, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Again, this is Angel Rebo with Mindalia TV, and thank you for being with us today.